When most people think of elasticity, they think of this. We can design things out of materials that you don't usually relate to elasticity, like, you know, metals, aluminum and titanium. You don't think titanium, you think elastic, right? So aluminum, titanium, composites, those are the kinds of materials we can, we can leverage the elasticity of such materials to design things to be strong and flexible at the same time. Traditional structures are load-bearing, but they have absolutely no flexibility. You put a lot of links, a lot of parts, rigid parts with a lot of joints, and it's kind of assembly intensive. On the other hand, if you think about structures or mechanisms like these, they have a lot of flexibility, but they don't have the strength to withstand large forces or repeated applications. Our approach here is, how do you design mechanical uh, artifacts that are strong and flexible by leveraging elasticity of materials? The tentacles of an octopus is a good example that's very flexible, but also very strong. If you look at this conventional wiper that has many parts, conventional wiper, Compare that to this compliant windshield wiper, it's only it's half the weight, no joints, no wear, no lubrication, no friction, and it has only four parts. And as we all know intuitively, fewer parts you have, fewer things that could go wrong. So this way you can reduce weight, you can reduce the part complexity, you can reduce, you can really eliminate assembly more or less. In fact, this wiper can be made right here in Detroit 30% cheaper than what's ex imported from overseas. So in today's airplanes, you have seen flaps that deploy when you're taking off and landing at the trailing edge. And those flaps serve an important function of generating lift that's needed for takeoff and landing, and, but they also create drag. Having a smooth, continuous surface uh, like what we have here, you create the lift, but you reduce the drag, which in turn saves a lot of fuel. We use the elasticity of the material, and we optimize the structure inside. So. It deforms and at the same time it's strong enough to withstand the air loads. That surface generates 10,000 pounds of lift. That surface can support 24,000 pounds of load. It illustrates the whole idea of how to be strong and flexible. One of the new areas that we started, this is taking this idea of compliance to a different level altogether. And what I mentioned about how uh, the tentacles of an octopus arm or an elephant trunk is a good example of things in nature that are strong and flexible. We took that idea, that inspiration, and started this elastofluidics research. A flexible tubing wrapped with fibers. By wrapping these fibers at different angles, and once the container is pressurized, we can get different kinds of motion. We can get these soft robots, so to speak, to rotate, to bend, to twist, move in a helical pattern. The conventional robots are usually caged and fenced because if something goes haywire, you could really get hurt. Now, if you have soft robots driven by you know, the pressurized air that's available in the manufacturing floor, and in the future you could see uh, those kinds of robots doing pick and place kind of operations. They are very inexpensive. They are safe to work around with. Drastically reduces part count, giving the same functionality. That's the goal. And that's where this idea of distributed compliance fits in to make make joint-less mechanisms or flexible structures that are also strong. The original flight, the Wright Brothers flight, didn't have conventional flaps. It had a wing twist phenomenon. So the wings were very lightweight and they twisted them to get flight control.